You know how in movies and books, when somebody tries to bring back a loved one from the dead, that never comes out well. The story is about people who wanted to do it anyway. And they wanted to do it with a bull, whose name was Chance. He was just like a big bundle of loving, if you've ever had a favorite animal, a cat or something, and uh, it just became like a, like a family pet. He'd lick your face. It really is like having a, a, a pet dog or a pet cat, except the size. But it, it, they seem so much less demonstrative, you know? Wrong. <laughs> that, that's wrong. Chance was also a part of the family business at Ralph and Sandra Line, taking pictures of people and animals at parties and events. Here's another board with uh, all Polaroids. Sonny Bono, I sat on him and rode in at some... Uh, it was a Republican national... Convention in East. Yes. Chance did the Letterman show. Well, certain parts of this animal looks like he's shoplifting sporting goods. Chance was in a movie with Vince Vaughn. He did the Super Bowl halftime show. He got around. So for years, Ralph and Sandra had this really sweet setup. They made their living working side by side with this animal they loved. Chance was so tame that he was allowed out of the pasture, and even had a favorite spot in the front yard, under the trees. Sandra used to watch him out of the kitchen window, which is a nice feeling to be doing the dishes, and you look out, and there's your tame pet bull, like Ferdinand. And this lasted until the day Chance died, at 19, old for a bull. I found him in the pasture one morning, dead. It was a really a sad day. I took the camera out and I was going to take some pictures and then I said, well, you know, he deserves more than that. So I skinned him. I skinned his whole body. I'd skin a while and cry a while. I was just like a baby, just crying like a baby out there with my knife, you know, skinning him. And I'm going, well, somebody has to do this. This is Chance. He was a big old guy and he was beautiful. The reason we kept the hide was so we can have him mounted and you have to do this. You have to go through this. It's just sad seeing I mean, he's empty. Okay, rewind. Three months before all that happened, Ralph heard about this way that he might be able to cheat death with chance. Keep him around. There's more than taxidermy. But it was a real long shot. Someone called me and said that uh, A&M was going to clone an animal. Texas I said, A&M. Texas A&M. I said, what do you mean clone? They said, you know, clone. Make one from another. I said, oh, no, can't be. Texas A&M is the world-famous veterinary school and animal hospital. It just happens to be about an hour from Ralph's house. It was Chance's regular hospital whenever he had a problem. Ralph, somehow, you know, he knew Chance was getting really old, and he found out about our program, and so he approached me and but would we be interested in cloning Chance? And I'm like, no, we don't. We don't clone animals for people. You know, we do research. We ended up begging him, is what it amounts to. And they finally just, I think we bothered them so much they gave up. They said, okay, well, we'll do it. In the end, the scientists decided to clone Chance for a simple reason. He was old. One of their experiments, they needed to clone an older animal. Ten months and 18 days after Chance died, the long shot paid off. A clone was born. The world's first cloned bull. It was huge news. And it was Ralph who figured out what they should name Chance's clone. Second chance. I would say, you know, we got him back. That, that's the first headline, I think, in the news clippings when they interviewed me. We got him back. I guess he's been reincarnated 
but I think he'll, we hope that he will do exactly what he did the first time, be a good pet, be a business associate. The first day we brought him home, and he was, he was really gentle, we, we turned him loose over here in the yard, and everybody was marveling. He goes over and lays down, he went over and laid down in the same spot. <laughs> this still kind of chokes me up. He laid down in the same spot that Chance laid in. You know, <laughs> I don't know, uh, that's not reasonable. When I see him, especially at a distance, he looks so much like Chance. And every day, he, as he goes old, gets older and older, he looks, you know, it's just physically so much. It was uh, interesting for me to listen to Ralph tell he lays under the same tree and he eats his food just the same as the old Chance did. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool, Ralph, you know. But I, I just, I, I don't put much thought into that. <laughs> like, people get attached to their animals and they want to sometimes see more than than's there. And they do see more than is maybe really there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean. It's like... It's, that's love right there. Yeah, that's love. Every year on Second Chance's birthday, Ralph and Sandra would throw a party for him, fire up some barbecue, which, if you think about it, would be so disturbing for the guest of honor, if only he knew. Anyway, it was his fourth birthday, and family and neighbors and friends were posing for pictures with Second Chance. We had his birthday cake, which is a big feed tub with, you know, candles on top, and. We blew the candles out, and we, and he ate his cake. And everything was going so well, and shows you how delicate life is. I said it's about dark, so I think I'll lead him back to the barn. I put one finger in uh, in his nose ring, which is a common thing. It gives you close contact. And, if they make any aggression, you can immediately feel it and, you know, respond. Anyway, I was walking him. I had the lead rope in the other hand. So we just, like, five steps, and he nailed me. He used all his power and all his might. He picked me up and whoosh, slammed me down. And then he proceeded to get on top of me. He dug some big holes with his horns. We found three deep, deep holes, six or eight inches in the yard the next day where he had missed me. At that time, all I was thinking about was, you know, why are you doing this? Why? why? My arm was in a sling for uh, six weeks. So I spent a lot of time out here just talking to him and trying to figure out what the heck was going on, you know, and if I could make some sense of what he had done to me. But was now clear to Ralph was, this animal was not chance. Reality had finally intruded in a violent way, and he had to admit that. Sort of. At the same time, he also believed maybe second chance could become chance. Well, the hope is involving his age since, remember, I, I got chance when he was seven years old, almost seven. So between birth and seven, we don't know what his attitude was like. So for me to say, well, second chance is not as calm, I don't know that that's a fact. We're hoping he will calm down and be, you know, as oh, gentle, as he, get, as as he gets, he gets older, old, yeah. uh, mellow out. That's what we're hoping for. Bob, here's one of the things I've been really wondering about your situation is, is I wonder if having second chance around all the time is ever painful for you because it reminds you that you don't have chance. It's like here you have this ghost of your favorite animal walking the property who isn't exactly chance and if it just kind of breaks your heart a little bit no sir it's just the opposite you're just exactly as wrong as you can be 
I feel like we've gotten about 95% of him back. I mean, the same qualities, the same fun. When he was laying out in that pasture out there dead, he was a zero. I mean, we would never have any enjoyment out of him anymore. And there's a tremendous difference between zero and 95% better. So we, we, you know, we got, we were allowed to have most of our feelings, most of our intimate feelings about him back. Yeah. When we visited Ralph's ranch, it had been about a year and a half since the birthday party was second chance attacked him. One night we were taping up by the house. Ralph was in the barn with second chance. Oh my god. What? You guys. What? The bull attacked him. Oh my Ooh. god. The bull attacked him. What's the address here? <laughs> What did happen? I was, I was Ralph, the... okay, Ralph had the feed bucket and Second Chance was right up against the gate. And so he was saying, get back, get back, so he could open the gate in. And, and he gored him, like, in his, in his, his crotch? It's his left scrotum is ripped and his testicles hanging out. Second Chance was trying to tell Ralph that he's not Chance, using the only language he has. Ralph had 80 stitches in his crotch, fractured his spine. The next day, we were finally allowed in to see him. So Ralph, how you feeling? Oh, I feel good. I don't look good. I was like, you should have seen the other guy, though. So you were saying when we talked before that you felt like with Second Chance, what you've got is 95% of what chance was. And I wonder if after this incident you might downgrade him to just like 80% <laughs> or 70%. No, because this is exactly the same kind of, the same type incidents as when he butted me 18 months ago, a year and a half ago. Come on, you think really 95% after that? Uh, what would second chance have to do to convince you he's never going to be like chance? Like, how many times would he have to attack you? After he's seven, then he has to attack me. I'm not too, we're, I'm just not too worried about it. Sandra, hand me that horse, would you? How does he work? what you have to do. If it was easy, there'd be a bunch of kids out there taking care of primary bulls. 